My name is Beston. I live in Cape Town. Also, I do uh, delivery. Interbed helped me to realize my dreams. Now I have my own delivery vehicle and I'm able to do the removal in and around Cape Town. Well, all things being equal, everything going according to plan thus far at Hollywood Bets Gravel. 16.05 will be the start of race number seven. This is the last leg of uh, Jackpot 1 and uh, it is over 1,400 meters. Your last chance to play a double if that's the bet that you fancy. And in the seventh race, let's have a look at the field from top to bottom. Uh, and it's over 1400 meters. Number one, Cordobesa Muziani for Dennis Boss. Two, Made in France, Samanga Kumalo for Mark Dixon. Kingsmead Crystal is Robert Carty and Garrett Fenzel. Fearless Kitty, number four, that's Glenn Cotson with uh, Donovan Dillon. Five, Rose Princess, Andre Nell, Gareth Wright. Six, Top Honors, Nathan Cotson and Billy Jacobson. Seven will be Miss Charlotte uh, Serena Mudley. Eight, Arlette Paul. Uh, Peter Musket and Kyle Stradom. Nine is Arctic Princess Gary Rich and Cole Dickens. And then number 10, Emerald Isla, God Puller and Jason Gates. Now, I've given you the entire feel um, there, Rael, because you like one horse. And uh, I'm not in disagreement because this is a place accumulator banker for me. But you like this horse for the pick six as well. And it's Miss Charlotte for God Puller and Serena Mudley. A horse that's at home on the poly track, solid over the course and distance, and threatening to win again. Uh, she does look to be the right horse in the race. Her last two runs, she's been beaten exactly 1.4 lengths on both occasions, finishing in third. She loves the course and distance. Her best form is over this course and distance. Three wins from nine starts. There's going to be a decent pace in the race, I feel, and Serena Mudley will just be able to get her out, get her into a good position. And turning form, I think she's going to be running on too strong for the opposition here. In a penultimate start, I don't think she was given the best of rides, I must admit, from the apprentice in the apprentice race. She was beaten 1.4 lengths. I thought she should have gone a lot closer or even won that race. And then last time out, she obviously did take on the boys and she wasn't disgraced at all. So back against her own sex, she does look to be the right horse in the race at home of the course and distance. And for me, with the rating drop, I know it's been 455 days since her last win, but she's on a really competitive mark of 63 points below her last winning mark, which was on a 63 when she beat the boys in, in, an, in an MR 65 handicap on a mark of 60 in a, with a average rating is a 62. And for me, she's the one that they all have to set their sights on is number seven, Miss Charlotte. I want to get your opinion on one horse, these, and that's number eight, Owlet. She's a lot better on the poly track. Three tries, one win, one fought. She's dropped down in the ratings. And a penultimate run, she ran on nicely on that occasion. I know last time out wasn't the greatest of efforts, but based on a poly track form and on that penultimate run, do you think she could get involved into trifectas and quartets? And when you, when you look out uh, at a form guide and then you just see a horse like this in black and white and you see in and out and then you see some poor runs, it doesn't give you any confidence to try and follow her with positive, uh, you know, anything confident to say, I'm going to go with this horse today, I'm going to include this filly today. It's more hit and miss and, you know, you have a blindfold all in trying to hit the bullseye. It's very, very tough with horses like this. You know, for me, when I, when I have a look at horses, Yes, some of them will be off form and they'll be coming down in the ratings and you can try and make a case for them. But the type, this type of filly, the penultimate run is the only standout run of late because, you know, she didn't confirm anything last time out. So it's very difficult as a race goer. You know, we market the, 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 the sport and the punting of the sport as the intelligent bet, meaning that you're taking a calculated risk. When I say the intelligent bet is that you got a form guide in front of you. This is what it is. This is what you walk into the race course with. You're trying to work it out, put the puzzle together. And, uh, you know, you only got yourself to blame. Yes, it's an information highway as well. Uh, you know, operators all around the country will try and bring you information with regards to interviews with trainers and jockeys, information that's been passed on and on course. And then you couple that with the looks of the horse in the parade ring and then you try to work it all out. But for me, the, the first point of entry into having a bet is what's represented in black and white. And she doesn't give me any confidence at all. So 
to answer your question, if I'm playing it wide for trifectas and quartets and you're looking for a horse to make it pay, uh, this is the type of horse that could do that. My only danger to number seven, Miss Charlotte, is number two, Made in France. And she's another horse that's unreliable. But she's got Samanga Kumalo up and the way she races, you know, she needs a confident ride. Her best races have been from the front. She's nicely drawn at two. So number two, Made in France, is going to be my horse as a second pick. I don't have a third choice here, Ryle. I'm with you on number seven, Miss Charlotte. And the exacto horse for me is number two, Made in France. So I'm hoping that you spot on with that as well. Wouldn't that be a treble? Wow. Lucky Dancer, Don't Touch Me, and Miss Charlotte. Don't work that out just yet, Ryle. We'll, we'll do it during the break. We'll come back and work it out in race number eight. Maybe it could be an omen. All three of them are now number seven. Yes, so that's seven what it is. I was going to mention that they have triple seven. Spin the wheel. <laughs> we'll never know. We will never, but uh, let's hope that we could be spot on come Monday afternoon with uh, Miss Charlotte. Obviously hoping that Lucky Dancer and uh, Don't Touch Me could have done it for us earlier on in the day. But uh, Deez and myself, we both like the number, uh, number seven here, Miss Charlotte. And the likely danger could be number two, Made in France, who does enjoy the course and distance. Samangu Kamalu gets a ride and is drawn in gate number two. It's Donovan Everture from Cape Racing and uh, I'd just like to say it's an absolute pleasure to be involved with uh, Intrabet and Cape Readers in this, uh, in this golf day today here at Pool Valley. Um, it's fantastic for the industry to see all the relevant stakeholders coming down and having a good time and networking and it's exactly what the, the industry needs right now in terms of moving forward and recreating some positivity to take us forward into the next year.